أكبر الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه أما بعد فنسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنا كما نسأله أن يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In that very beautiful story that I've shared long time ago and that I would like to share again because I think it is such a beautiful story where two of the tabi'een of the generation after the Sahaba radiallahu anhum got together and they asked each other what will we ask our mother about? What will we ask Aisha radiallahu anha about? And they were brainstorming because they knew that they could ask her any question that they wanted about the Messenger of Allah the way he ate, the way he sat, the way he, he interacted with the people surrounding him, they could ask her anything. And then Ata came up with the question that you and I would love to ask the Messenger, or rather the wife of the Messenger of Allah So they both went to Aisha radiallahu anha and they said, Ya, ya Ummana, O oh, our mother, because Allah says in Surah Al-Hazab that the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are our mothers. The problem is, to be quite frank, what do we know about our mothers? We even may not know their names. Can you imagine? Allah says in Surah 33 that the mothers of, yani the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are your mothers. Some of us don't know the name of all their mothers. That's problematic. Because the Prophet said, the best one among you is the one who is best for my family when I die. When I pass away, when I die, the best ones from among my ummah are the ones that are the best for my wives. How will we do this today? By passing on their legacy, by knowing who they are, at least to start with. So they go to Aisha radiallahu anha. They say, our oh, mother, akhbir, akhbirina. Yani, tell us. ما أحجب ما رأيتيه من زوجك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. What is the most astonishing thing that you saw from your husband to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم? Look at the question. Like they say, when somebody asks you a question, you see their intelligence immediately. The questions of the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم was always about the heart, the soul, about perfecting themselves. It was about reaching the high levels, about getting rid of the diseases of the heart and of the mind, and so. What is the most astonishing thing? Ya Salat. So, Bakat. Sakatat wa Bakat. Yani she remained silent and then she started crying. She was silent and then she started crying. And she said, Qama laylatan min al One night he woke up, alayhi salatu salam. And sometimes he would wake up in a state of panic. He would wake up in a state of panic. And then Aisha radiallahu anha says, Then he would wake up and he said, Allahumma. إن ساعة حق إن وعدك حق إن الجنة حق إن النار حق إن القبر حق إن الصراط حق. He would make up like that. يا رب, the the Jahannam is true. Jannah is true. My meeting with you is true. The قبر, the grave is true, and its trials are true. And that would prevent him from sleeping. And then he would say, من يوقظه يعني who will wake up these women? Because people who are dressed today will become naked in front of their Lord tomorrow. So he would wake up in a state of panic and this was one of these nights. <laughs> and she said, Qama. And he, he woke up. And he said, Ya Aisha, dalini ata'abbadu al-laylata li Rabbi. Ya Aisha, allow me. Like, he doesn't need permission. Like you don't need permission if you get out of your bed. You don't need permission of your wife to get out of bed, right? That would be a very strange thing. So you just get out of your bed. He said, Ya Aisha, allow me to, this night, to sacrifice this night to worship in Allah. And then she said, Ya Rasulullah, Innahu, Ya Inni Uhibu Ma Yasuruk. I love what you love. Wa Inni Uhibu Qurbak. But I love you to be near to me. Look, the hikmah. Look. A husband, Rasulullah, the lion of lions. Now, the strongest man ever in heart and behavior. He's asking for permission, that's just being polite. It's showing respect. And then Aisha, look, if she would have said, yeah, go ahead. It would be like, I don't care if you're next to me or not. 
But she said, Ya Rasulullah, I love what you love, but I love you to be here. فَقَامَ فَتَوَطَّأَ وَصَلَّى And then he got up and performed the wudu and started praying. فَبَكَى وَلَمْ يَزَلْ يَبْكِي حَتَّى بَلَّحْ لِحْيَتَهُ حَتَّى هُوَ بَلَّ لِحْيَتَهُ And then he started praying and he was crying until he wetted his beard. ثُمَّ بَكَى فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يَبْكِي حَتَّى بَلَّ حِجْرَهُ and then he kept on crying until all of his lap was wet because of his tears. And he kept on crying until the entire floor beneath him was wet. There was a pond of prophetic tears. What happened? I want to know. Wallahi, to be quite frank, in a time of many voices and in a time of many choices, it is the voice and the choice of Rasulullah that we want. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Fadakhala Bilal. And Bilal came to say, Ya Rasulullah, the time for Fajr has entered. What made you cry, Ya Rasulullah, the way you are crying? And then he says, Laqad anzal Allahu. Allah has revealed this night, ayat, verses. Waylun. لِمَنْ قَرَأَهَا وَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرْ فِيهَا He said, Allah has revealed verses this night, a way which means destroyed are those who read it but do not think about it. Who read it but do not ponder. Who read it but do not reflect. They just read the Qur'an, these verses, and they do not think about it. What were these verses? You want to know. What and why was he crying? Look. The ulama say in that night, 1400 years ago approximately, your prophet was crying his heart out for people like me and maybe some of you, who read the Qur'an and don't seek to be admonished by the Qur'an. رُبَّ قَارِئٍ لِلْقُرْآنِ وَالْقُرْآنِ يَلْعَنُ said the Prophet ﷺ. So many people read the Qur'an while the Qur'an is cursing them. So he was crying, making dua, Ya Some people will come of my ummah. And they will read these verses, but they will not think about it. So he was literally supplicating, asking for people like us, the, the last of generations maybe, to live on the face of the earth. He was making dua, crying over us. He loved us before scenes. Isn't that a reason enough to rejoice? That he said, I'm looking forward to meet my brothers. Aren't we your brothers then, Ya Rasulullah? You are my companions, but my brothers are the one who heard about me, never saw me, but chose to believe in me. So how I was looking forward to people he never saw, crying to for people whom he didn't know to be saved. And it were the ten last ayat of Surah al -Imran. These verses, the Prophet, when he would wake up, والسلام, first thing was not phone. You know, the first impression, that you get, the first thing you're in touch with when you wake up is what you will carry with you, the vibe. You will carry that vibe with you for the rest of your day. If you wake up and the first thing you do is phone, or the first thing you do is watching what is happening in the world, look at what the Creator is doing. Every night, sun, moon, stars, everything. So he would look at the stars, he would literally stand in the open, look at the stars and read these beautiful verses. <laughs> Until the what end of these ayat. So this is a sunnah which the Prophet used to practice. He was always connected to the universe. Because when you're connected to the universe, you cannot do anything else but melt away, observing he, the, the work of His Majesty, the King Allah, one and only King Jalla wa So this is what happened. This is why the, our Prophet was crying. And this is why we love Him so much. This is why we look up, on, uh, look up to Him. And the best thing that we can do, and it's the most difficult task, is to follow Him in His behavior, to follow Him in His heart, in His mind, and we will make mistakes. But as long as we try and we get up after the fall, it doesn't matter. Allah will judge you in light of who you want to be and try to be, even if you didn't get there. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial. Alhamdulillah, kathiran kama amar. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri wa abdali wa azka al basar. Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala jami'i man iqad tafa al So this is why Sahib al-Qur'an 
yani the, the, the companion of the Quran, like the Prophet said, the Quran is in a vessel, and that vessel is the heart of the Mu'min, and that vessel will never be burnt. So people who carry the Quran in their hearts are protected against the punishment of Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet said, The Quran is an argument in your favor or against you. If we work with it or we try, it is in our favor. So this is why when we read the Quran during the month of Ramadan, that's beautiful. And that's the last thing I'm going to share. It's beautiful. We were standing behind the Imam. We were listening to the Imam. We were dedicated and that you will be rewarded for that without any doubt. But how many verses have we read that we didn't understand? It is really a question we need to ask ourselves. How, why would we like to try to give it our everything? To understand the word of the Lord we worship. It's our only lifeline. Can you imagine? It is the only book that keeps on speaking the truth day and night. It is a guidance that will never be changed. It is a light that will never go out. It is the word of Rabbul Alameen where the king is speaking and addressing his people. Why would we just like to read it like a parrot and not understand it? Let the last part of our lives be. <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounds very depressing, right? But I'm, I'm almost turning 50, so I start to think much more about death. I'm sorry for the young guys here. You will have a very long life, all oh, the elders as well. But anyway, let us sacrifice and dedicate the last part of our lives, well, however long or short this may be, to understand as much as we can from the Book of Allah. Because the better we understand it, the better we will be able to live up to the message. Even if it means that we dedicate one hour a day, two hours a day, it doesn't matter. Because all the rest that we are doing usually doesn't lead to many very good things. I ask Allah to make this beneficial. Allah Mahdina Fima Hadith. Wa Afina Fima Hadith. Tawalla Fima Tawalla Fima Hadith. Wa Afina Fima Hadith. Wa Kina Wasrif Anna Sharma Kadaita Fahina Karabi Tafdi Wala Yudu Hadith. Fahina Hulania Isam Hadith. Wa Nia Dilam and Walaita Tabarakta of the Nawat Hadith. Allah Mahina Nasiruka to the Muslim in Ila Dinika of the Jamila. Allah Mahuda feels the Nina Ila of the Him. Allah Makum Mahum. Allah Makum Fiauni Him Dad and Layla Walahara. اللهم كن معاهم يا رب يا ربنا اللهم ارزقهم اللهم ارزقهم ارزقهم النصر دائما يا رب اللهم احفظنا واحفظهم اللهم اكرمنا واكرمهم يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم انا نتبرأ اليك مما فعل السفهاء منا لا اله الا انت ربي سبحانك اني تبت اليك واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب